And everybody on their feet for the opening kickoff. John Janung will handle the chores for LSU. Stacy Simmons, Wayne Williams waiting inside their five yard line. The kick is only to about the seven yard line. Wayne Williams has it there. And a good return by Williams out across the 30 yard line all the way out to the 32. Kyle Morris, the freshman quarterback with perhaps his biggest challenge of his young career. A key man in that Gator offensive line this afternoon, Brad Hatcher, making his first start of the year in that offensive guard spot. Kevin Sills, Charlie Wright, both out with injuries. Kevin Sills hurt his neck uh, last weekend, will not play this afternoon. Uh, Brad Hatcher steps into the starting guard position. He usually plays offensive tackle. Kyle Morris with Cedric Smith and Emmett Smith lined up behind him. First down at the Gator 32. The pitch is to Emmett Smith. And a little trickery right off the bat on the end around Ernie Mills. And Ernie Mills gets out to the 40-yard line. A penalty flag is down. Eric Hill, number 54, making the tackle for LSU. A beautiful play by Eric Hill, too. Ernie Mills has all kinds of speed. If he'd gotten outside right there, LSU would have been in big trouble. But Eric Hill, who's 6'2", enlisted at 256. Did he ever run over there to make the play? This is against the Tigers. It'll give the Gators a first down. And, Jim, we, we can look for a little more trickery this afternoon by the Gator offense. They're going to pull out all the stops here today. Hard to believe Eric Hill would make such a mental error right there, uh, very obviously grabbing the face mask. Uh, last weekend, we talked about uh, how penalties hurt the University of Florida. LSU comes right out here and makes a rather stupid penalty uh, on the first series, giving the University of Florida tremendous field position inside LSU territory. You got to look at the defensive starters for LSU. The key tacklers on the team, those two outside linebackers, Ron Sancho and Eric Hill. Sancho's number 52, Hill's number 54. They're the two leading tacklers on this team, along with the inside linebackers, Verge Osbury and Rudy Harmon. A great linebacking core for LSU. Pete, they called that unintentional, uh, grabbing the face mask, so it was only a five-yard penalty rather than a, a flagrant violation, which would have been a 15-yard penalty. So it's a first down at their own 45. The pitch to Emmett Smith. This time he keeps running behind his line. Gets out across midfield down to about the 46-yard line of LSU. All kinds of running room right there as we look at uh, Emmett Smith on the year. 530 yards to date. Uh, lots of room there, Pete, on that carry. Greg Jackson finally brought him down. The free safety after a gain of close to nine yards. It'll be second down and one. The Gators are rather confident, I think, in their running game because last year at Baton Rouge, uh, Emmett Smith got 184 yards. Uh, the Gators did lose the game 13 to 10, but they proved they could run the ball last year on LSU, so they enter this contest with some confidence. Second down and one in the opening minute of play. Emmett Smith goes for the first down. He's got that down to about the 41-yard line. Eric Hill, number 54, making the initial hit for LSU. You mentioned Eric Hill and Ron Sancho. Ron Sancho, an All-American prospect, number 52. LSU thinks they've got the best pair of outside linebackers in the South and possibly in the nation. So the Gators have picked up their second first down in this opening drive. 13-48 remaining opening quarter. Two tight ends in there now. Emmett Smith, the lone running back. Morris hands the ball to Emmett Smith, and this time he's going nowhere. Got tripped up at the line of scrimmage by the nose guard, Daryl Phillips. Carl Dunbar also helping out on the tackle. No gain for Emmett. It'll be second down and 10. Every game played this year by Emmett Smith has resulted in 100 or more yards. He has seven straight games of 100 or more, dating back to last year. Pretty healthy average, 7.3 yards. We did see Daryl Phillips, the nose guard, number 62, make that tackle. He was an all-conference performer for LSU last season. Uh, he's the one that nicknamed the LSU defense Heavy D in the boys. Second down and 10. And we have a penalty marker thrown. I think too much time was taken. It was. And that'll cost the Gators five yards. I don't think uh, Kyle Morris was aware of... Uh, the referee's timing when he marked the ball initially right there. They came out of the huddle very slowly and were easily over the time limit. Now Galen Hall this week will want this offensive unit to cut way down on the number of penalties they committed last week in the victory over Mississippi State. Way too many penalties well, on even, the Gators side of the ball last that's year. That's right, Pete. We're even right now. LSU's had one penalty. Florida's had one penalty here in the first 
offensive series of the afternoon. Second down and 15 at the LSU 46. Morris hands off to Emmett Smith. Smith looking for running room on the far side of the field. Gets back to about the original line of scrimmage, and then he is snowed under. Ron Sancho, number 52, and on that tackle, along with Carl Dunbar, number 63, the defensive end. LSU only giving up 95 yards per game to date in the 1988 season. Very tough to run against this LSU ball club. So a big third down play, third and nine coming up. Just shy of the LSU 40. Morris back to throw for the first time. Dumps it over the middle to his tight end, Mark McGriff. It's a completion at the 37-yard line, but not going to be enough for the first down. Greg Jackson making the stop for LSU. LSU wanting to put the heat on Kyle Morris right there. Brought both inside linebackers as well as their down defensive linemen. Weren't going to give him a chance to look downfield, and he had to dump it off to McGriff, who made a nice catch but came up short of the first down. So John David Francis will attempt this one from the 42-yard line. It'll be a 52-yard attempt. His longest of the year has been a 47-yarder. He's 8 out of 11 overall. Just missed one from about this distance last week. There's the boot by Francis. It might make it. It did not quite get there. So John David Francis just missing on that 52-yard effort. It stops the clock with 11.49 remaining in the opening quarter, and we are scoreless from Florida Field. As we look on the field, uh, there we see the Tiger offense. Uh, Hodson Fuller, the strong running back, Ralph Norwood, one of the best offensive tackles in the Southeastern Conference. Up front for the Bengal Tigers. Uh, we notice that Tony McCoy is starting in lieu of Rodney Weston uh, as a down lineman and also Kerry Watkins number four is in the game for the Gators. Watkins announced earlier in the week that he'd be starting or Galen Hall announced that Watkins would be starting. No interceptions no sacks for Hudson so far this year. That's the challenge for the Gator defense this afternoon and they were all mixed up in that first play. You saw the fullback Victor Jones run in and Unsure of the play, asked something of quarterback Tommy Hudson. By the time he got back to his position, too much time had been taken. Well, they'd played before those big crowds in their three previous games, but obviously the noise here was to the extent that they couldn't hear. There's the Gator defense. As Jim mentioned, Rondy Weston not starting. Tony McCoy in his spot today. There's that fine linebacking core, and there are going to be about four others rotating in and out of the game on that linebacking unit. Kerry Watkins starting. Lewis Oliver, of course, the big man in that defensive backfield for the Gators. First and 15. The pitch is to the tailback, Eddie Fuller. And he finds very little running room. Pat Moorer making the tackle. There you see Tom Hodson's career record for touchdown passes already. Only a junior. Just past Steve Spurrier, who of course was the great Heisman Trophy winner for the University of Florida back in 1966. Tommy Hodson just passed Steve Spurrier on the touchdown list. And look at that total yards. Only Jeff Wickersham passed for more yardage in LSU history. And if Hudson stays healthy, he'll catch him by next year. Under some pressure, he almost was victimized for the first time. Huey Richardson got back there. Almost came up with the first sack of the year against Hudson, who threw it away incomplete. It'll be third down and 13. That's an excellent point, Pete. This guy doesn't get sacked, but Huey Richardson, who's six feet six, gets in his face in a hurry. And Tommy doesn't have a choice here but to throw it into the grandstands. And he's that smart, you know, he's not going to give up a stupid uh, interception. He's not going to take the stupid sack, you know, and put his team in a in a box. He just threw that ball away. He has thrown 135 pass attempts dating back to last year consecutively now without giving up an interception. Rolling right again is Hudson. Looking downfield, cannot find an open man. Now he loves it. Intended for Tony Moss, number six. Penalty markers are down. Back near the 42-yard line. Well, LSU comes out and rolls out on that passing play, trying to take some heat off of Tommy Hodson, trying to neutralize that Gator pass rush. Trace Armstrong took the inside rush, so Tommy had quite a bit of time on the outside to look downfield. There is a flag in the secondary, but we're not sure about the call. The officiating crew talks it over. Today's referee is Dick Burleson. The umpire, Nathaniel Anderson. The linesman, George Morris. The line judge, Tommy Larino. Jim Dopolis is the side judge. Joe Curtis, the field judge. Charlie Horton, the back judge. And Prince Pollard is the alternate. 
This call goes against the Gators. Might be against Lewis Oliver here. As personal foul, dead ball. Uh, they're going to give an automatic first down. Lewis got a bit anxious right there, hitting the receiver after the play was clearly over. And again, uh, mental mistakes, you can't afford them, but uh, you can't take away from the guy's aggressiveness either. It's a hard battle for the coach to fight with these young men. Uh, they don't want to take away their aggressiveness, but they don't want them to make the, uh, the stupid penalty either. There you see the numbers on Lewis Oliver leading into today's game. But he just made a mistake that cost the Gators 15 yards and gives LSU a first down at their own 47-yard line. With 11.02 remaining in this opening quarter, Mike Archer, who in his first year as head coach of LSU last year, Turned in a remarkable season. One of the youngest games. One of the youngest head coaches in the nation, if not the youngest. Only 35 years old. First down. Hudson back to throw. Has good protection. Let the pass incomplete. Again, he was trying to hit his wide receiver, Tony Moss. Overthrew him by about 15 yards. Richard Fain was back in the coverage for the Gators. You see what Archer's record looks like when stacked up against such legends as Charlie McClendon and Bernie Moore in his first 15 games as LSU head coach. Second down and 10 at the LSU 47. Hudson giving the ball to his fullback Victor Jones and Jones goes nowhere. Rondy Weston, Jeff Roth in on the stop along with Joey Nicoletto for the Gators. Trying to catch the Gators in a pass rush with a little bit of a draw action right here, but no one was fooled. They had all the gaps were taken inside because they were blitzing as well. And again, Huey Richardson with his terrific speed comes all the way from the outside and actually makes the hit in the backfield. It'll be third down at 11. At the LSU 46. Again, some confusion. Fullback Victor Jones had to come in, make sure of the play. The pass is incomplete, intended for Ronnie Halliburton, and the Gators' defense has held. Trace Armstrong right on top of Hudson as he threw that ball. So Hudson has missed connections with his first three pass attempts. And you got to tell me that's unusual, right? I would think so. Stacy Simmons dropping back deep. The putter for LSU, Brian Griffith. Nine men on that line for the Gators. They've blocked three punts this year. They're coming hard here. Not a real good kick, kind of a low wobbly one. It'll get down to the 20-yard line, though, and it's going to roll dead at about the 16-yard line. So the result, not so bad for LSU. A 37-yard kick, no return. The Gators will start inside their own 20. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to later in the first quarter. Hudson giving to his tailback, Eddie Fuller. And Fuller was only able to get back to the line of scrimmage before he ran into Pat Moorer. A correction, that's Slip Watkins, who's come in there now for Eddie Fuller. Watkins, who backs up Fuller at the tailback spot. Talking about Rondi Weston on the outside, you see him uh, fighting off the block, breaking down on the trap. And look at Nick, Joey Nicoletto, number 49, stepping in the hole. He saw that trap action, stepped up immediately. But Rodney Weston held his ground effectively. So it is second down and 10. Watkins went for no game. Again, they're going to try to run the ball. And this time, they're going to have a little more success. The ball carrier, number 32, Daryl Williams. Lewis Oliver and Richard Fain <laughs> making the tackle. Darrell Williams playing in place of Jay Egloff. Darrell Williams coming into this ball game with only 38 yards rushing to date here in LSU's fourth ball game, but what a gigantic hole the offensive line opened up for him right there. Big Ralph Norwood, number 78, Rufin Rodrigue, Todd Kuti, Jim Hubitz, and Robert Packnett doing a great job up front for LSU. First down at the LSU 33. 
Slip Watkins got it out to about the 35-yard line. Trace Armstrong and Rondi Weston making the stop for the Gators, a gain of about two by Watkins. You talk about a battle of the Titans, Pete. That's what's going to happen out there this afternoon. Those guys that line up near that line of scrimmage, near that football, they're going to decide who wins this game. They're going to decide whether the quarterback has the time to look downfield or not, whether that hole is there for the running back or not. What a battle up front. Slip Watkins, very appropriately named. He's only 5'9", 176. He's a native of Florida. He's from Fort Lauderdale. Second down at eight. Watkins again. Out across the 35, and he's going to be snowed under at about the 37-yard line. Joey Nicoletto in on that tackle. Pat Moore, Ephesians Bartley also over. Ephesians Bartley did a very fine job right there of turning the running back inside so his teammates could get over there and make the hit. Ephesians Bartley, number 44, playing right now at outside linebacker. And Florida defense with three shutouts to their credit already. But they've got their work cut out for them today. Third down and six. Hudson back to throw on third and long. And the oh. pass is picked off. And it might go all the way. Not quite. Richard Fain with the interception. And the Gators will have a first down just shy of the 10-yard line. A 25-yard return by Richard Fain. A lot of pressure right here on Hudson. Trace Armstrong, Ephesians, Bartley knocking his feet out from under him. Richard Fain, the right cornerback, uh, the ball is thrown directly to him. We said Hudson very rarely makes the mistake of throwing the ball up for grabs, but here he clearly overthrows his receiver. And Fain is heading for the end zone, but a great opportunity or a great effort is made by Ronnie Halliburton, the tight end, to save the touchdown. It's the first time since last year that Hodson's been intercepted. 140 attempts in a row by Tommy Hodson before Florida erased that big zero on the interception column. And you give credit to those down linemen uh, up front uh, in Ephesians, Bartley, uh, Trace Armstrong putting the pressure on Hodson, and he threw the ball away, and Richard Fain was right there to make the interception. Fain's first interception of the year. You can't underrate, though, the effort there that was made by the tight end, Ronnie Halliburton. He really literally saved a touchdown right there, and we'll see if the Gators can come up with the points anyway, but Halliburton... Refused to give up the easy touchdown and made the tackle on Fane. First and 15 now after the penalty against the Gators. They gave us to the fullback who gets across the 15 down to about the 12 yard line. Not much running room in there. Verge Osbury making the tackle, the initial hit for LSU. Willie Steamboat McGrady, the ball carrier, he's generally blocking. Cedric Smith, Willie McGrady doing the blocking out of the fullback position for the great tailback Emmett Smith, but on occasion they do get to carry the football themselves. After a gain of about three yards by McGrady, it'll be second down and 12. The Gators still could get a first down without going into the end zone. The first down marker is about a half a yard away from the end zone. McGrady, the lone running back, Emmett Smith has gone out wide to the right. Kyle Morris back to throw. The pass is caught at about the seven-yard line by Ernie Mills. He's brought down immediately by Greg Jackson. It'll be third down. We've got a penalty marker on the far side of the field, down at around the 12-yard line. And a motion penalty against the Gators. Jim, they're being hurt again by offensive penalties this week. Ernie Mills was in motion intentionally right there on the from the left side of your screen on from the left side of the field. But I think Emmett Smith moved a little prematurely on the right side. And unfortunately, this nice pass to Mills is going to be brought back and the Gators will be penalized for illegal motion. So it'll be moved back to the 17 yard line. The down remains second down. And with 5.50 remaining in this opening quarter, the Gators trying to get on the board first. Boy, what a beautiful shot that is from the uh, over top the crossbar in the end zone. Second down, 17. Morris back to throw, has good protection. The pass is caught 
by Simmons at about the 10 yard line. He gets to about the 8 yard line. Greg Jackson, that free safety out of Miami, again making the tackle. He's been getting a lot of tackles in this game early in the game. Pete, we talked about how the uh, LSU offensive line has been protecting Tommy Hodson all season. The Gator offensive line has only given up two sacks to their opponents. And uh, right there, they gave Morris plenty of time to pick out Stacey Simmons, who made a nice catch across the middle. Third down and eight. Morris back to throw on third down. In some trouble now, dumps it off, the pass incomplete. He just got rid of that one. McGrady was the nearest man to it, but Carl Dunbar broke through for LSU along with Eric Hill. And they just about had more of a sandwich there. And he did get uh, rid of it, and wisely so. He saved the field position for John David Francis, who now has a much better opportunity to make the field goal. Morris now three out of six for 32 yards in the passing department. Francis will attempt this one from the 15-yard line, a 25-yard attempt. He missed a 52-yard attempt earlier, but he has not missed from this range all year. The kick is up. And good by John David Francis. So the Florida Gators on the board first with 4.52 remaining in the opening quarter. So how about the young... The scoring drive resulting in the John David Francis field goal. Hurt a little bit by penalties, but the Gators did get some points out of it. The first turnover via the interception route for LSU this season, but it was a big turnover right there, and the Gators are on the board. Now Francis approaching the ball. Drills this kick deep. Slip Watkins at the two yard line. Starts up the right side. Cuts back toward the middle of the field. And that'll be as far as he gets. He is brought down by Jimmy Spencer. After a 23 yard return. Big tackle by Jimmy Spencer. There was nothing but uh, green uh, artificial turf in front of slip right there and he would have slipped on down the field I think you saw that thermometer a moment ago even though the air temperature is only 84 degrees down on that turf a little bit over a hundred degrees that turf really holds the heat but that means it must have been about 120 degrees down there last week it's much more pleasant today and there's a good breeze blowing as well Hudson back to throw on first down. Oh! Intercepted again. Richard Fain again, and this time he will go all the way. Second interception of the day to make it 9 nothing. Fain is simply going to step right in front of Tony Moss, the wide receiver. He's reading the eyes of Hudson all the way right here. Just jumps right on that football. Sprints into the end zone. We talked about Tommy Hudson not throwing the ball up for grabs. Uh, what a shock to see him throw the ball out there and have it intercepted. Two big interceptions here in the first quarter. John David Francis converts the extra point. 14 seconds after kicking a field goal, the Gators have added seven more. 4.38 remaining in the first quarter. Gators leading it 10 to nothing. There's the man of the hour, Richard Fain, the young uh, quarterback who had played some at the safety position for the University of Florida last year, now getting his first opportunity this year to start at the corner. And what a start this has been for that Gator defense. We talked about it earlier. A stern test for the Gator defense was so far so good. That's right. Both uh, scoring opportunities have been a direct result of the play of the defense. More specifically, Richard Fain. Well, you know, John Elway, what did he have? Four interceptions last week. Uh, Dan Marino, all those great quarterbacks are capable of having one of those days. And Tommy Hodson really steps in the bucket here early in the first quarter for LSU. Francis ready to kick this one off. Watkins and Fuller are deep for LSU. This one carries all the way into the end zone and Slip Watkins says not this time. It'll be LSU's ball first down at their own 20. You know Pete what what a 10 to zip lead does for a team in the first quarter it gets the fans behind them even to a greater extent and once the fans are behind them 
uh, the emotion level rises, and it's much more difficult for the traveling team, the visiting team, to have some success because of the noise level and also the emotion level. Momentum, emotion, right now it's on the Gator line of scrimmage. Tommy Hudson has yet to complete a pass. He's 0 for 5, two interceptions, both by Richard Fain. And they're going to try to run the ball a little bit now. Eddie Fuller, the ball carrier, got it out to about the 24-yard line. Trace Armstrong, Owen Bartriff making the tackle. There are the numbers on Tom Hudson, a Heisman candidate. No but so far, he has really been closeted today by the Gator defense. A lot of pressure on him, and uh, Richard Fain just making an outstanding play, breaking on that ball, reading Tommy Hudson's eyes from the moment the ball was snapped. A four-yard gain by Fuller on that last carry at second down and six. This is Fuller again. Looking for running room on the far side of the field. He's got enough for the first down. He was finally bumped out of bounds by Jeff Roth. Joey Nicoletto also in on the play. Eddie Fuller, uh, the tailback, is averaging almost 96 yards per game running the football from the tailback position. Harvey Williams, LSU's outstanding tailback, uh, is redshirted this year. He was hurt and will not play this year at all. So a lot of pressure on Eddie Fuller to carry the load. Now you see what Nicoletto did a week ago. The leading tackler individually on this Gator defense coming into this game. First down for LSU. 3.58 remaining opening quarter. The Tigers trying to run the ball. They've had no success throwing the ball. Rondy Weston there to make the stop along with Mark Murray. LSU trying to trap the uh, defensive lineman for the University of Florida, but those Gator inside linebackers are stepping right up in the holes and making the hit at the Come line of scrimmage. Defense. Pat Moore doing an excellent job. Number 45, as is Nicoletto, number 49. Mark Murray now in the game at outside linebacker, number 54. Second down and eight. Hodson pitching to Fuller. Fuller. Up to about the 41-yard line before he's brought down by Pat Moore, number 45. It's going to be close to a first down. They may not even have to measure, in fact. It is a first down, I think. Nope, they're going to... Yeah, it is. It is a first down. Fuller now four carries for 20 yards. Little over three minutes remaining, opening quarter. The Gators leading it 10-0. And LSU going more to a ground attack now, Jim, as they've been unable to get the passing game going. They have zero yards passing to this point. Hudson back to throw. And again an incompletion. He is now 0 for 6 with those two interceptions. Now let's go down to the field. Larry Vitell. Larry. You know, Pete, Tommy Hodson, the LSU quarterback, has a reputation for being unflappable. Well, he's pretty well flapped right now. The Gators are showing blitzes, taking them away. Fee Bartley has got Hodson very much confused. He is staring at one receiver as a result, not panning the secondary. Richard Fain's reading his eyes, and that's why he's got two interceptions. So far, Larry, that battle of the defensive secondary that you and Jim were talking about earlier, very much in the Gators' favor. Second down and ten. And no running room for the fullback, Victor Jones. The 5'9", 200-pound junior out of Zachary, Louisiana, brought down by Tony McCoy. Big Tony McCoy, who's rotating with Rodney Weston on the field, uh, doing an excellent job right there. A loss of two. It'll be third and 12. So far in this game, only 36 yards gained by LSU, all on the ground. Now we see Tony McCoy lined up on the outside and just runs right around the blocker to make the hit in the backfield. Third and long. Hudson back to throw. Firing long downfield, and there is the first completion of the day to the tight end Willie Williams. Lewis Oliver making the hit at the Gator 40-yard line. Well, you knew it wasn't going to go on forever. A 19-yard gain on that play, Jim. Yes, Hudson... Uh, hitting the Williams the tight end look at him concentrate on that football he's going to get hit right in the head by Lewis Oliver but he doesn't give up the ball Willie Williams 6'6 249 big target for Hudson first time LSU has been in Gator territory first down at the Gator 40 a minute 45 left in the opening quarter it's 10 nothing Florida three receivers flanked to the left side 
and flags are down. I think LSU took too much time. Nope, it was a false start. That's the third LSU penalty. They've been penalized 15 yards in the game. Moves it back to the 45. Well, Pete, I'm going to say the obvious, but one quarter does not a game make, and LSU is proving right here that even though they're down 10 to nothing, they have a lot of talent, and they're going to come back and make this a ball game uh, really quickly right here, and they're having an impressive offensive drive right now. First and 15 at the Gator 45. Fuller in motion. The handoff going to number 32, Daryl Williams. Joey Nicoletto finally brought him down after a pickup of about 13 yards. An excellent trap play on Trace Armstrong. Watch Trace Armstrong come down and get trapped right there. Daryl Williams hits the gigantic hole and is finally tackled in the secondary by Kerry Watkins. But just a beautiful play on the trap blocking by LSU up front. Darrell Williams, the younger brother of Harvey Williams, was out with an injury this year. Fuller, the ball carrier, he got nowhere. Huey Richardson, number 90. Drops him for a loss of about two yards back at the 35-yard line, where it'll be third down. Boy, this is punch and counter punch, isn't it? I hit you, you hit me back right there. Huey Richardson stood up on the line of scrimmage and made a big hit, putting LSU in third and, what, four or five at least. Just 20 seconds remaining. There's Huey. He had a big interception last week. Third down and five. At the Gator, 35. Hudson with a straight drop. The pass is complete, but it's going to be shy of the first down. Huey Richardson making the hit on Alvin Lee. Very close to third first down territory, but not quite there. I think they're so close they might go for this. They look like they're within a, a half a foot. Uh, it's very, very close, and I wouldn't be surprised at all for LSU to go for this because uh, they have proven on this series that they can move the football, and uh, you see that's a tired Gator defense out there right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if they went for it if, in fact, they are short. <laughs> Well, the Tigers fail on their fourth down attempt, and the Gators punted to start the second quarter. We'll pick up action. LSU ball at their own 45-yard line. Gidry has checked in at quarterback for LSU. Hudson has not been able to get anything going. There you see Gidry's career numbers. And helped off the field is Harvey Thomas, and it does look like a knee injury. Mike Andrews likes to get Mickey Guidry in the ball game regardless of the circumstances. He'll always play early in a ball game, uh, more specifically generally in the second quarter. But Mickey Guidry out there playing this afternoon, and that's a steady pattern that LSU has shown over the years that Guidry has been the quarterback with Hodson. He's a senior out of Gretna. The pitchers to slip Watkins. Watkins gets it out across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Bill Lang making the tackle for the Gators. Lang had an excellent game last week. As did Tim Pock, who's out there right now, number 99. That outside linebacker makes things happen. And Bill Lang is a very intelligent safety, always around the football, very rarely making the middle error. Nicky Guidry, in his limited playing time this year, has not missed a pass yet. He's 4 out of 4 for 32 yards. And he's back to throw for the first time here. He's 5 out of 5, connecting with Alvin Lee for a LSU first down. Inside the Gator, 45. Richard Fain making the tackle. So Mickey Guidry directing this LSU drive. There you see Mickey, senior out of Gretna, Louisiana. Alvin Lee, one of the top receivers on this LSU team. Caught 10 passes in one ball game this year. He and Tony Moss, the two deep threats. It's a first down at the Gator 44. The big fullback Victor Jones runs into Tim Polk, Tony McCoy. After a gain of about two, it'll be second down and eight. 
Well, the short punt, LSU did come up with great field position, and right now they've moved the ball across that 50-yard line, and any time you get across that 50-yard line, that end zone becomes like a magnet to those guys in that offensive huddle. Second down and eight at the Gator 42. The pitch is to slip Watkins. Watkins trying to get across the 40. And another big tackle by Richard Fain, who's having a great afternoon to this point. He really is. He just did an excellent job there on the tackle. Fain from North Fort Myers High School, a sophomore. And you know, Jim, that's been one thing about this Gator defense in these first five games. It seems like it's somebody different every week. It's not the same one or two players that the defense has to rely on week after week. That's an excellent point. And sometimes it's not even a guy on the first unit. It's two or three guys on the second unit that come up with a big play. Third down and four at the Gator 38. Gidry looking downfield. Can't find a receiver. Now he does, and it's complete to Moss. Moss for a first down down at the 22-yard line. He was finally brought down by Brad Culpepper. But the Tigers have another first down. Good patience that time by the quarterback, Mickey Gidry. Well, the problem here uh, is Mickey Gidry gets outside and there's no containment. He has all day long as he drifts to the sideline to look downfield and find a receiver. And Tony Moss was wide open after Gidry had the patience to look and look and look right. As you'll see here, Gidry Sprints out to the right, and there's no containment. There's nobody to even slow him down. He's looking, looking, looking. Now he's going to find Moss and throws back to Moss, who comes up with a catch. And that was noticed from the Florida sideline. Wholesale substitutions. That first unit has gone back in defensively. Gidry. Still with the ball is Slip Watkins. He faked the handoff to Moss. And he's brought down at about the 17-yard line. Richard Fain in on that tackle again, along with Huey Richardson. Wayne Williams scored on such a play against Ole Miss and Jackson earlier this year for the Gators. And right there, uh, LSU running the fake reverse. But again, Richard Fain, the right cornerback at the bottom of your screen, refuses to be fooled, comes up and makes a nice open field tackle. Second down and five. At the Gator, 18. Slip Watkins. Looks like he got enough for the first down before Joey Nicoletto brought him down. Let's go down to the field now and Larry Vitell. Larry? Harvey Thomas is on his way into the Florida locker room. The freshman linebacker suffered a, an injury to his left knee on punt coverage. We don't know how severe yet, but it's severe enough to know that Harvey will not play again today. We'll find out the extent of the damage and how long the Gators will be out without that talented freshman a little later on in our telecast. Okay, thank you, Larry. First down for LSU. They're at the Gator 11-yard line. Slip Watkins again the ball carrier. This time he gets to about the line of scrimmage and that's about it. Tim Palk number 99 stepping up to make the hit at the line of scrimmage. But is LSU ever doing a nice job on this series? Traps, lead blocking by the fullback. Just an excellent running game right now. And uh, Remember, a lot of balance. A lot of balance by LSU. There you see Watkins numbers for the day. Remember. The Gators have not been scored on in the first half of any of their games this year. So this would be a first if LSU can get anything out of this. Second down. 11 yards to go for the first down. Up the middle, Williams gets to about the 10-yard line, a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and eight. Big series for Mike Archer here in LSU. If they can get six... Get the kick, get seven points. They're going to be back in this ball game in a hurry. But if the Gators hold them to the three, it'll be a mental victory or a moral victory, at least for the Florida defense, if they can hold LSU to three on this particular drive. The ball just inside the 10. A big play here. Galen Hall looks on from the Florida sideline. It's third down. About seven yards to go for the first down. The pitch is to slip Watkins, looking for running room left side, finds none. Unable to turn the corner, Lewis Oliver got in there for the Gators, along with Pat Moore. Lewis Oliver, the uh, free safety, had containment right there. He had to contain the the attempt by the ball carrier to get outside. He was came up in support and made the play all by himself at the left of your screen. Watch Lewis Oliver come up, 
And with his speed, he doesn't get caught. Makes the tackle. This will be a 27-yard attempt by David Browndyke, one of the best place kickers in the Southeastern Conference. He's only missed one all year, and that was an over 50-yard attempt. Browndyke connecting from 27 yards out, and the Tigers have gotten on the board for the first time. So I can't remember this much wind at Florida Field in uh, some time. It's quite windy. The wind is swirling around on the field. That was the fourth LSU penalty. They've been penalized 20 yards. Gators also have four penalties for 30 yards. This is Wayne Williams at the 12-yard line. And not a bad return at all. Out to about the 35-yard line. A return of 22 yards. Greg Jackson making the stop for LSU. And they do, in fact, have great field position outside their 34-yard line. 10-3. Gators leading it. 7-18 remaining in this first half. Gators trying to go 5-0 in the year, 3-0 in the conference. LSU trying to go 3-1 for the year. And 2-0 in the conference. Very important conference game here today. Morris back to throw on first down. Has good protection. Now that protection starts to buckle a little bit. Morris will have to run with the ball. Gets it out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Excellent coverage by that secondary of LSU right there. Kyle Morris had no one open. He had plenty of time. His offensive line gave him the protection, but no one was open. No one could shake the secondary. A gain of about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Morris, who got very valuable playing experience in the early games against some of those Division I AA schools. But as Lynn Amity said this week, it's time to play at a different level this week. Complete to Stacy Simmons. Good for the first down. He was hit initially at the 46-yard line by Mike Mays, but he had plenty for the first down. Mike Mays just playing a little soft on Stacy Simmons and wisely so we might mention because of the speed that Stacy Simmons has Stacy Simmons ran right at him right there and simply did the button hook Kyle Morris delivered the strike Morris now four out of seven for 42 yards 37 of them on three catches by Stacy Simmons first down Tater offense needed that first down right there the handoff to Emmett Smith and he's going to be close to another first down before running into a wall of LSU players led by Ron Sancho and Corey Raymond. A gain of about eight for Emmett Smith. It'll be second down and two. Pete, you know, when Lynn Amity came to the University of Florida this year as the offensive coordinator, he said that he'd like to pass the ball first to set up the run. And I think that's exactly what happened right there. Kyle Morris came out, threw the ball with some success, then comes back and runs the draw, a little bit of draw action. Emmett Smith picks up a quick nine yards. It is second down, less than a yard to go for the first down. They spot the ball at the LSU 43. And we got a whistle just before the snap. I believe we had a problem with the clock that time. The timeout was on the official. 25 second clock problem is corrected. We're ready to go. That was the problem. That was a problem with the 25 second clock. Ronnie second Weston, down and one. Trace Armstrong there on the bench getting a well deserved rest. Handoff is to Cedric Smith. Looks like he got enough for the first down. He only needed about a half yard. Looked like he got about a yard, yard and a half. Carl Dunbar and Daryl Phillips making the stop for LSU. Well, there's two back-to-back -back first downs. That's what you need, obviously, to keep a drive alive. And uh, that Gator offense really needed a, a uh, morale booster. And those two first downs should have given them the confidence they need right now to move the ball against LSU. 
537 the time remaining in the half. First and 10 at the LSU 42. Morris back to throw on first down. Firing downfield almost picked off by Osbury. Verge Osbury number 98 got a hand on the ball almost had it. That was really the only very poorly thrown ball that Cal Morris has had all afternoon. He just clearly overthrew his tight end right there. Mark McGriff was trying to hook up beyond the linebacker's seam right there, and that ball just gets away from uh, Kyle Morris big time right there, almost throwing the ball up for grabs. But it must have slipped, or uh, but it was clearly overthrown. Osbury, the inside linebacker, one of that fine linebacking core, the top four tacklers on the LSU team are those four linebackers, Sancho, Osbury, Harmon, and Hill. And most great defenses, that's typically the case. The defensive linemen sacrifice their bodies, uh, knock down blockers, and the linebackers step right up to make the tackle. So that'll be second down and 10. The clock is stopped here with 524 remaining in the first half. Gators a 10-3 lead. The touchdown coming on a return of an interception of 42 yards by Richard Fain in the first quarter. And the two teams have swapped field goals. On second down, Morris back to throw. The pass is completed at the 35-yard line. Tony Lomack making the reception. Mike Mays drove him out of bounds after the catch. He's shy of the first down by a couple of yards. It'll be third down and two. Tony Lomack had six receptions coming into this ball game uh, this afternoon and moves the football down towards the first down marker, third and short. You see Lomack's numbers on the year for the afternoon now. Morris is five out of nine for 51 yards. Excellent protection up front. Third down and two at the LSU 35. Emmett Smith. Eludes one tackler, but he's not going to elude those three. No gain on the play for Emmett. Ron Sancho would not let him turn the corner. Galen Hall doesn't hesitate right here. Sends in his field goal kicking unit, even though it's fourth and uh, looks like a healthy yard at least. So this will be another long attempt by John David Francis. You see he's one for two for the day. He missed a 52 yard attempt early in the game. This one will be a 51 yard attempt. And that's going to come up just short. That's happened to John David Francis a couple of times this year. LSU couldn't move the ball in their next possession. We'll move ahead to later in the second quarter. Gator ball at their own 25 yard line. Kyle Morris taking over first down. Back to throw on first down. First down has been a passing down much of the afternoon for the Florida Gators. Ernie Mills on the receiving end that time has plenty for the first down. Mike Mays and Eric Hill driving him out. Tommy Hudson having a tough time of it this afternoon. Only three out of nine. While Kyle Morris, his counterpart, has completed six out of ten. But Mickey Gidry still batting a thousand, isn't he? I don't think he's had an incompletion this year. And he did yet. an excellent job when he was on the field for LSU. First down at the Gator 38. Morris changing the call at the line. Back to throw again on first down. Firing towards Stacy Simmons. Couldn't connect this time. That's the play that has worked twice this year for big Gators. Greg Jackson, Jimmy Young back in the coverage. All right, Greg Jackson, the free safety was an excellent position right there. If the pass had been perfect, it, it might have been a completed pass, but uh, very rarely can you hit a guy running that fast perfectly. But he did split the seam between the safety and the cornerback. The ball just was a little bit overthrown. So that'll make it second down and 10. At the Gator 38. The give is to Emmett Smith. Smith running behind that wall of linemen. Gets it out across the 45 to about the 46 yard line. Verge Osbury and Greg Jackson making the tackle. It's shy of a first down by a couple of yards. Two tight ends coming into the ball game right now for the Gators. They're come up with some kind of power formation. 
Third and about a yard and a half. Actually, three tight ends in this formation. One of them's in the backfield. The one in the backfield is Kirk Kirkpatrick. Kyle Morris has the first down. He faked the handoff to Emmett Smith, kept the ball, got to midfield. First down, Gators. Greg Jackson making the tackle for LSU. Well, that's an excellent call in a short yardage situation. Uh, you think they're going to give the ball to Emmett Smith, but he fakes the handoff. Runs the option around the corner, ducks his head, picks up the first down. A lot of courage right there by Kyle Morris. Kyle Morris, a redshirt freshman. Getting his chance this year. First down at midfield. A minute 38, the time left. That pass incomplete. Clock is stopped with the incompleted pass. It'll be second down for the Gators. They the intended receiver, Willie Sneed, Mike Mays, back in the coverage for LSU. Morris now 6 out of 12 for 68 yards. And with a minute 35 remaining in the half, it's second down and 10 at midfield. Movement along the line of scrimmage. Senior tight end Mark McGriff missed the snap count right there. Obviously jumped off sides. This will be the fifth Gator penalty. Oh, 35 yards. I thought it was on one. That's what he's going to say. Alberta looking on from the Gator sideline. Just another pretty face. Second down and 15. From their own 45-yard line, Morris back to throw. The pass is caught out near midfield by Sneed. Verge Osbury making the tackle. It'll now be third down and about 11. Osbury all over Sneed right there. He didn't have a chance to get loose. So with the clock moving, a minute 15 left. Third down and 11. Neither team has used a timeout yet, so if it comes into play in this final minute, the Gators could stop the clock. Morris back to throw on third down. Good protection again and a wide open receiver. The tight end, Mark McGriff. He's got enough for the first down. LSU choosing Pete only to rush three men, dropping eight back in coverage. Eric Hill, Mike Mays, the cornerback, comes up with the hit on Mark McGriff, the tight end, but an excellent decision right there by Kyle Morris, dumping the ball down to his tight end, who had an opportunity to pick up the first down. Now you can see the numbers on Mark McGriff for the year. He just picked up an important first down for the Gators. They retain possession with 48 seconds remaining in the half. Big first down right there for the Gators. First and 10 at the LSU, 39. Three-man rush again. And again a completion, this time to Stacey Simmons at the 28-yard line, another first down. You know, the LSU defense has done a terrific job all the first half against this University of Florida offense. Now, for some reason, they choose to go in this prevent defense, only rushing three men, dropping back eight, and they're having all kinds of problems right now stopping the Gator passing game. First down at the LSU 29. There are 43 seconds remaining in the half. Gators leading at 10-3. They'd love to add at least three more points before halftime. Emmett Smith could not find any running room that time. He picked up a yard, that's all. 35 seconds on the clock as the Gators call timeout. Lomack in motion. Morris launching one long downfield. It is out of bounds, incomplete. Jimmy Young back on the coverage. The tight end, Kirk Kirkpatrick, was the intended receiver. The incompletion stops the clock with 29 seconds to go. 29 seconds is an eternity when you throw the ball on every play, so LSU's really in a bind right here trying to stop Florida. Of course, it is third down. They're only going to get one more shot at this first down attempt, and then I'm sure they'll try the field goal. Emmett Smith brings the play in from the Florida sideline. 
Mike Archer looking on intently as his defense has a big assignment here on third down and ten. Morris back to throw. Good protection again. Can't find an open man. Now he does. Boy, he was close to being across the line of scrimmage when he threw that pass. He was very close, but he clearly, I believe, was behind the line of scrimmage, and he just didn't want to give up the uh, the sack right there. I think he felt the pressure. He might be knocked down behind the line of scrimmage, so he just let that uh, that ball fly. So with 23 seconds remaining in this second quarter, John David Francis checks in. This attempt will be from 44 yards out. He is connected today from a 25 yard effort and missed on two attempts longer than 50 yards. The 44 yard boot by Francis is good. So the Gators did get something out of that drive as John David Francis connects from 44 yards out to make it 13 to 3 with only 18 seconds remaining in the half. I'm Brad. 74,264. That's the 11th largest crowd in Florida field history on hand as this third quarter is about set to get underway. And this will be a big possession for LSU. They waive the right to uh, make the decision whether to receive the football uh, when the coin was flipped to begin the ball game. And they wanted the ball in the second half. They wanted this opportunity. There's the kick by Francis. Taken by Slip Watkins. And Watkins with a good return, getting all the way out to about the 27-yard line. And there are the disappointing for LSU numbers for Tom Hodson in the first half. Remember, he had not been intercepted in six straight games, completing only three out of ten, having those two passes picked off. One of them run back for a touchdown. We'll see if he has a hotter hand here in the second half or if the Gator defense can do it again to him. Tommy Hodson is used to getting 32 yards in one offensive series, not one half. First down at their own 27. The give is to the tailback and Slip Watkins with a pretty good game that time out to about the 33 yard line. This might be an indication uh, that LSU really thinks they can run the football against Florida and they did with some success early in the game and they might come out right here and try and reestablish that running game and in effect open the passing lanes to Tommy Hodson later when he chooses to pass. Rondy Weston made the tackle on that last carry. It is second down and four. At the LSU 32. No hole that time. Eddie Fuller stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Joey Nicoletto, Huey Richardson, and Nicoletto is still down. Pete, Joey Nicoletto's the young man that also oh. made the play. He dove across the line of scrimmage, shot the gap, created confusion in the backfield, and he was hurt as well. Let's hope it's not serious. Fifth-year senior from Tampa Chamberlain High School. Uh, just played so well this season for the Gators. A uh, lot of leadership from Nicoletto uh, coming up with interceptions, key tackles, tackles behind the line of scrimmage. He's just had an outstanding year to date. This appears to be either a shoulder or a side injury. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Nicoletto on the bottom right of your screen is going to shoot the gap right there, and he does make the hit on Fuller in the backfield, and he's coming off under his own power, so perhaps he's just shaken up for a bit, and we'll get back in and see some action in the second half. So after no gain on the play, Nicoletto will be tended to. It is third down and five. Tim Polk has replaced Nicoletto. At that inside linebacker position. Back to throw on third and five. Hodson's pass is complete. It was flanker Tony Moss. Bill Lang making the stop. It'll be shy of the first down. I think he was shy. He came back to catch that ball, and I think his knee went down just shy of the first down marker, and that, in fact, is what has happened. There you see the numbers on Joey Nicoletto for this game, and hopefully the Gators will be able to get him back in there. It appears to be an injury to his right hand, we understand, from down on the field. So LSU forced to kick. Brian Griffith in to do the kicking. The Gators have 10 men lined up on that line of scrimmage. Stacy Simmons back deep. Gators are coming, but Griffith gets the kick away. Simmons at the 27-yard line. 
Took a couple of pretty good hits down at the 35-yard line. A 37-yard kick by Griffith. About a six-yard return by Stacy Simmons. It'll be Florida's ball first down at their own 35. Excellent job by the Gator defense. Uh, three downs and punt, holding your opponent to three downs and a punt in the first drive of the second half. Very important, and as we see Kyle Marsh going out to the huddle, the Gator offense now has excellent field position thanks to the stand their Gator defense made on LSU's first series of the second half. You saw the numbers on Kyle Morris with a very good first half. And he begins this Gator drive at the Gator 35-yard line. Back to throw on first down. That's been the case much of the day. The pass intended for Cedric Smith is incomplete. Well, he seems to be under no pressure at all. That Gator offensive line really doing an excellent job. Big John Durden, number 72, at one offensive tackle. And, of course, the All-American David Williams at the other tackle. That offensive line doing an excellent job protecting Kyle Morris this afternoon. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. On the draw play, Emmett Smith. Picked up about eight yards before Rudy Harmon, number 58, made the stop out at about the 43-yard line. It'll be third and two. Well, you see a bit of difference in the philosophy. LSU came out in their first possession and ran and ran and then decided to pass. The Gators come out and pass and then decide to run. It'll be almost three yards to go for that first down. 13 carries for 48 yards now for Emmett Smith. Third and a long two. Morris back to throw, has Stacy Simmons for the first down at midfield. Simmons eludes two tacklers. Now they're gonna say he was down back at the 49-yard line. College football, the knee goes down, the ball is dead, and uh, the whistle was that Stacy had possession of the football when his knee touched the ground. I don't like that rule. I like the pro rule where you can get up and run run with the football. You're not down until they knock you down. He's still got enough for the first down. That's 100 yards in the air now for Kyle Morris on the day. I think it, you know, it ought to be up to the defense to knock you down. When you go down on your own, you ought to be able to get up and run with the football. First down at the Gator 49. Emmett Smith and a little bit of a hole got across midfield down to about the 48 yard line of LSU Ron Sancho big number 52 that outside linebacker making the tackle unbelievable but right now the Gators only have 68 yards rushing and LSU only has 66 yards rushing so what an effort by the defenses on the field it'll be second down and about seven the ball is right on the LSU 48 Gators leading at 13 to 3. We're in the opening minutes of quarter number three. Emmett Smith again, the ball carrier. And with great second effort, Emmett Smith gets down to about the 42 yard line. Daryl Phillips and Jamie Bice making the stop for LSU after a gain of about six. Pete, by look, Emmett Smith. Pete, look at the movement right here that that Gator offensive line creates. Emmett Smith has a chance to look left, look right, and then decide where the daylight is. And you can only do that when you're controlling the line of scrimmage. Uh, Chris Bromley, number 52 in the game right now, doing an excellent job. Emmett Smith beginning to warm up here in this third quarter. After being, for the most part, shut down by the LSU defense in the first half. I don't know that he's ever mentioned it, but... Uh, I wonder if he does feel better and stronger the more he carries the football. Uh, any talented tailback wants to carry the football a lot, but I, I wonder about Emmett Smith. He, he might, in fact, be one of those guys like a John Riggins. The more you give him the football, the more dominant he becomes. As you saw on that measurement, just shy of the first down. It'll be third down, a couple of inches to go for the first down. We've seen a couple of these plays converted by the Gators on option plays where Morris carried the ball himself for the first down. This time, it's the fullback, Cedric Smith, and he does have it down to the 40-yard line. Carl Dunbar, Daryl Phillips in that defensive line, bringing him down, but not until he got enough for the first down. Gator offense starting where they left off late in the second half. They were able to move the ball on that last series of the second half. Now they come out in their first possession here in the second half and move the ball quite easily. Emmett Smith getting a breather now. Wayne Williams is checked in at the tailback spot. 
on first and ten at the LSU 40. And the Gators are going to call a timeout here. Eleventh largest crowd of the year here today. And they have seen a defensive struggle. With the Gators defense, the dominant one thus far. The only touchdown in the game scored by the defense. Morris with lots of time, but his pass is incomplete. Dwayne Williams, the intended receiver. Jimmy Young there on the coverage. You know, sometimes, Pete, you get so much protection, it becomes dangerous because the defensive backs are able to pick up the eyes of the quarterback, and he's standing back there looking, 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 and Morris has a tendency, as any young quarterback would, to look sometimes in the direction where he's going to throw the ball and almost uh, through the interception right there because, in fact, he had too much protection. Could you believe that? Morris now 10 out of 20. Good for 100 yards, second down and 10. Back to throw again. Again, he has good protection, and this time the pass is caught at the 30-yard line. Kirk Kirkpatrick, the tight end, with a nice reception, and then fell forward to get the first down. Rudy Harmon making the tackle for LSU. Kirk Kirkpatrick uh, caught, uh, I think, 50 passes his senior in high school, and they projected him to be a valuable member of this team at the tight end position and he stepped forward this season made a major contribution another Gator first down at the 29 yard line of LSU you see all the speed that the wide receivers possess on this Gator team Emmett Smith back in the lineup gets down to about the 25 yard line a gain of about three Verge Osbury Ron Sancho making a hit for LSU Call it a four-yard gain. It'll be second down and six. Another good drive here, Jim. Just an excellent drive right here. Uh, the Gators uh, dominating the line of scrimmage. Uh, Kyle Morris getting plenty of time when he chooses to pass, and they're running with some effectiveness, too. And this week, no penalties, or at least not very many. Not nearly as many as there were a week ago. Third down, make it second down, and about six. Emmett Smith. Down to about the 22-yard line. It'll be shy of the first down by about three. More of a ball control type offense being used by Galen Hall. Mike Archer looking on from the LSU sideline. Eight minutes and 39 seconds here into the with uh, left in the third quarter, and LSU only had three offensive plays. Punted the ball to Florida, and Florida's held the football for this entire uh, portion of the third quarter very successfully moving the football on offense at the LSU 22 third down and three Morris back to throw on third down that pass complete for the first down Terrence Barber knocked out of bounds by Jimmy Young excellent thrown pass by Kyle Morris right on the money for the first down at the 14 yard line Barber the sophomore from Auburndale, Florida. Kyle Morris again, as we mentioned, showing a lot of poise, hitting Barber on the out route. So this drive continues, a little over eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Gators leading at 13-3. They have a first down at the LSU 14. Out of the eye formation, Emmett Smith has the ball, gets it down to about the 11-yard line. Ron Sancho. Caught him from behind after a gain of about three. Again, Sancho, one of the finest outside linebackers in the nation. He's all over the field for LSU every Saturday afternoon. Ron Sancho, number 52. 7.49 remaining third quarter. That's a tired LSU defense. See them down on their knees right now. They're sucking air. Very tired out there on defense, and that Gator offense needs to take advantage of that fact. Second down and seven. Again, Emmett Smith has the ball, gets inside the 10-yard line, down to about the 8-yard line. Rudy Harmon making the stop for the Tigers, along with Daryl Phillips. <laughs> Emmett Smith getting up off the bottom of that pile, shy of a first down by about five yards. Galen Hall wants his offense to get in the end zone. He wants six points. He wants seven points. He doesn't want to come up with another field goal. He'll take it, obviously, to... The offense will uh, put points on the board if they can, in fact, kick the field goal, but they're thinking touchdown right now. 
It is third down and five. At the nine yard line. Morris back to throw. Pumps once. Now looks into the end zone. And the pass is picked off by Osbury. So all of that time used by the Gators. And again, I think that's a, an example of the quarterback getting so much time that he looked exactly where he was going to throw the football. He kept looking and looking, and Osbury had the time to react on the football and come up with a catch. Verge Osbury with his first interception of the year. LSU didn't dodge a bullet there. They dodged a cannonball. So now the Gator defense needs to do it again. Tommy Hudson pitching to slip Watkins. Watkins going nowhere. Dropped for a loss of about three. Trace Armstrong. Watch Trace Armstrong, the fifth-year senior. Oh, excuse me. This is Morris throwing the interception right here. Big break for LSU right there coming up with the interception. Verge Osbury with a big, big interception for the Tigers. That Second LSU. down and 12. This defense has done it all day again, holding LSU to only a field goal. Can they do it again here? Hudson back to throw, has time. The pass is complete to Tony Moss, but it goes for very little yardage. Huey Richardson and Bill Lang there to make the hit. And Tim Polk, he's all over the field. The inside linebacker was out there making the tackle near the sideline. He, you're talking about range and speed, uh, being able to not only cover your own zone, but when the ball's thrown to break on the ball, and he broke on the ball and made the tackle near the sideline. So now a big third down play. It's third down and seven. Number 99, Tim Polk in there playing for Joey Nicoletto. They went out with a hand injury a short time ago. Third and seven. Hudson back to throw. Has pretty good protection. The Whoa. pass, though, is incomplete, and Tony Moss was wide open. They Hudson. couldn't have stopped him with a hand grenade right there. He was so wide open, but Tommy Hudson was not able to hit him, Pete. Hudson only 5 out of 13 for 41 yards on the afternoon. He's just not having a very good day back there. Unbelievable, but those things do happen. We might see Mickey Gidry back out there because when he was on the field, he had some success, and Hudson's the kind of guy that eventually will come back and have that success, and he might, in fact, have a terrific fourth quarter. Brian Griffith in the game to kick. Stacy Simmons back at about his own 40-yard line. 5.20 left in the third quarter. Ten men on the line for the Gators. Not a real heavy rush that time. Griffith gets the kick away. Stacy Simmons has it, bobbles it. It's a loose ball, and it's still loose. LSU has it. At the 46-yard line, Gordy Rush falling on the football after a 34-yard kick that Stacy Simmons tried to catch on the run and couldn't hang on to. Well, he should try and catch it on the run, but he probably should try for the fair catch and then catch the ball on the run. He did not indicate fair catch right here. He wanted to keep the ball from bouncing down the field. Just didn't use the judgment perhaps that he should have. Uh, if he'd gone the safety route, uh, fair catch, he might not have had the, uh, the fumble. So LSU recovering the first Florida fumble that the Gators have given up all year. And a big break for LSU. Hand oh. off to slip Watkins. Boy, did he get hit at the 45-yard line. Guess who? Tim Polk, number 99. A huge hit after a gain of just a couple of yards. Call it a one-yard gain. It'll be second down and nine right at the 45. Let's take a look at Pauk on the inside, uh, the right of your screen. Boom. He almost removes a head right there. Slip Watkins, not a very big guy, only 5'9", 176. He's a little smaller after that hit, I think. About five, eight and a half now. <laughs> second down and nine. Hudson back to throw. Can't find a receiver. Looks the other way. Now lobs it out and completes it. To his tailback, Eddie Fuller. Now that's the Tommy Hudson that most LSU fans are used to seeing. And we have a flag on the field. What happened there? Huey Richardson, the outside linebacker, had dropped back and had Fuller covered. But when he thought Hodson was going to run the football, he came up. Hodson saw that and just dumped the ball out to Fuller. The tailback came up with the catch. A holding call will go against the Gators. And although the Gators have 
retained possession of the ball for much of this third quarter. LSU now getting dangerously close to scoring territory. And the reason they're there is because of the turnover. The reason Florida has seven points on the board uh, was because of the turnover. The reason Florida got a field goal early in the game was because of a turnover. So these things come back to haunt you. Now LSU is threatening to put points on the board because of the turnover on the fumbled punt. There you see the penalty situation. That last penalty was declined. LSU taking the first down at the Gator 23-yard line. Just over four minutes left in the third quarter. Hodson handing off to Darrell Williams. He got nowhere. And Tim Polk again. The man who got in there to make the hit. You just can't say enough nice things about this kid from Miami Carroll City High School, a freshman. And he looks like he's got the uh, potential to be an All-American. Every time he's on the field this season, he's making things happen. Look at the speed. He sees the guard step out. So he's going to fill the fill the hole, makes the tackle in the back backfield. So it is now second down and 12. LSU held at just 63 yards on the ground in this game by the Gator defense. Hudson took a hit as he got rid of the ball. It's incomplete. Ephesians Bartley is the man that got in there right on top of Tommy Hudson, who's been under more pressure this afternoon than he's probably seen in a little while. Ephesians Bartley and Tim Pock are very similar, very fast linebackers, and they're both freshmen. Ephesians Bartley from Jacksonville Fletcher High School. You saw that scoring summary. And just about every point in this game thus far set up by the defense. There have been no offensive touchdowns scored. Three field goals and a pass interception return for a touchdown. Third down and 12. Hudson back to throw. He's under some pressure. The pass, though, is thrown. It's incomplete. It was not caught in the air. Fielded on the hop by Alvin Lee. And the incompletion gives Hudson 6 out of 16 on the afternoon. And LSU will now have to try for three points. They've got a very good field goal kicker. David Browndike. He's missed only one attempt all year. He has never missed a point after attempt in his collegiate career. He hit from 27 yards out earlier. This will be a 42-yard attempt. It is long enough, and it is good. John Janung getting ready to kick it off for the Tigers. Stacy Simmons and Wayne Williams are deep for the Gators. It is fielded by Stacy Simmons. And he gets it out to the 28 yard line. Oh no. And Stacy Simmons is hurt. He is holding his right leg. Jimmy Young making the stop, and this could be a big blow for the Gators. Looks like when he planted his foot on the return, he got hit at the same time. All his weight was on, on his foot. Let's see if we can pick it up. See if his foot's down when he gets hit. No, actually, it wasn't, so maybe it's not as bad. Uh, generally, when your foot is planted and you get hit, it's much more severe of an injury, so obviously he's in a lot of pain right now. We'll keep our fingers crossed. It is first and 10. Morris handing off to Emmett Smith. Emmett with a good hole. All the way out to the 35-yard line, about a six-yard pickup. It'll be second down and four. The LSU bench. And Emmett Smith beginning to churn out the yardage now as he goes for his eighth straight 100-yard day. 20 carries, 78 yards now for Emmett Smith. Second down and three. Smith again the ball carrier. Got only a yard or two. He's going to be shy of the first down. Stopped by those two inside linebackers, Verge Osbury and Rudy Harmon. So now a big third down play for the Gators. It'll be third and about two. Just over two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Florida holding on to a 13-6 lead.
they're going to have trouble getting this ball off. They're down to eight seconds, seven seconds on the clock right now. They might get a delay if they don't hurry. Only two seconds left. They got the playoff in time. The pitch is to Emmett Smith. There's the hole. Smith has the first down. He's at midfield. He's at the 40, and the big break by Emmett Smith gets it down to the 33-yard line of LSU. Greg Jackson finally forced him out. A 31-yard gain, which gets Emmett Smith over 100 yards for the eighth consecutive game. Emmett Smith limping a little bit as he came off the field. But he has done it for the eighth straight time over 100 yards. Watch big Richard Starowski, the right guard pulling right here. And Brad Hatcher, number 76, seen some action tonight, this afternoon at the offensive guard position. And Willie Steamboat McGrady, look at that block. That's what you call a, a pancake right there, giving uh, Emmett Smith some room to do his thing. 22 carries for 109 yards now for Emmett Smith. He's on the sidelines now. Morris's pass is out of bounds, incomplete. The intended receiver, Willie Sneed, Greg Jackson back in the coverage. There you see the numbers on Emmett Smith. And his own record just goes one game longer here, eight straight times, over 100 yards. Last year against LSU, we mentioned earlier, he got 184 yards uh, this afternoon, a lot uh, greater uh, defensive effort on the field, and he's just cracking the 100-yard barrier here late in the third quarter. Smith did limp off the field a little while ago, but it looks like he'll be back in there. Second down and 10. Wayne Williams on the reverse, giving it to Ernie Mills. And Ernie Mills falls forward inside the 25-yard line. Jimmy Young making the stop for LSU. Ernie Mills is the second fastest Florida Gator next to Stacy Simmons, so they wanted to get him the ball on that reverse, and Kyle Morris was out there throwing a block. Here we're going to see uh, Wayne Williams handing off to the flanker, and Kyle Morris is out there trying to throw a block for, for his teammate. He threw that block on Ron Sancho, enabling Ernie Mills to pick up a few more yards. It is third down and two. Richard Starowski also injured on that Emmett Smith run, so he's out of the game. Out of that offensive line. Emmett Smith is back in there, though. And he's got close to the first down, running into the inside linebacker Rudy Harmon before he's hit. It is a first down for the Gators. Chris Bromley, Assam Ishmael, number 77. Chris Bromley, number 52, doing a nice job up front. Ishmael just came in for Star Whiskey. Yes, he did. And Steamboat McGrady leading the charge uh, out of the fullback position right there. Now Emmett Smith attracts a crowd. First and 10 for the Gators at the LSU 21. 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Emmett Smith. Spins ahead to about the 16-yard line. Big David Williams, number 73, the offensive tackle, opens a rather gigantic hole right there. That offensive line doing a nice job here in the second half for the University of Florida handling that line of scrimmage. That tackle was finally made by Verge Osbury and Eric Hill. It was the final play of the... 13-6, Gators leading LSU, 15 minutes of football remaining. It's been, I guess, Jim, the kind of game everybody was looking for, although I thought there might be a few more points scored. I had a feeling it would be a close game. I didn't think it would be this much of a defensive struggle. I agree with you. I thought it might be 21-14, 28-21. Uh, the defenses would play well, but the offenses would come up with a big play on occasion. But that's really not happened. It's really not happened. It's been a rock'em, sock'em defensive battle, and the Gators, I think, have gotten the edge, have gotten a little bit of more control on the offensive line of the scrimmage, uh, especially here in the second half. Now they've got almost 263 yards total offense here as we begin the fourth quarter. LSU's only got 152. And what the Gators have to be careful here of is a turnover, which happened the last time they were down this close. Second down and five. Flags are thrown at the line of scrimmage. Might be against the Gators. Could be a legal procedure. Not what you want to do when you got second and five. Second and five, you got the defense in a real bind. Now they got new life. Well, after going just about penalty free through that third quarter when they had possession, now a penalty comes up and strikes the Gators. Emmett Smith now just one game away from Neil Anderson's Florida career 100-yard game total. 
He's amazing. He's only a sophomore. Second down and 10. As the ball on the penalty is moved back to the LSU 21. And Morris is back to throw. His protection is good. His receiver is open. Oh! But Tony Lomack could not hang on to it. Boy, was that a well-designed play. Tony Lomack comes out of the backfield. He's lined up as a tailback. He comes in motion, shoots down for the corner, but he just can't come up with a catch. Now, see him leave in motion there on the left of your screen. Now, screen. now he's going to break to the corner. And Morris is going to deliver the football, but he just can't catch it. Mm. Oh! That'll make it third and 10. Morris now 12 out of 25. Good for 115 yards. He's had one pass intercepted. Got three wide receivers in there now for the Gators. And they hand it off to the fullback, Cedric Smith, who gets inside the 20-yard line to about the 19 or 18. Darrell Phillips, Rudy Harmon making the stop for LSU, and it's going to be the field goal unit called on one more time here. Well, Galen Hall and his coaching staff, they want to get in that end zone. They want touchdowns. They will take the field goal, but uh, LSU obviously has the capability of coming back in a hurry. Ohio State uh, came back against them last week. Two touchdowns with less than a minute 52 left in the ballgame. This is a 35-yard attempt by John David Francis. It's good. His third field goal of the day. Vincent Fuller and Slip Watkins await the kick from John David Francis, who line drives this one. Watkins has it at the four-yard line. Great special teams play there at the 12-yard line. Owen Bartriff got him. It was a nine-yard return, but it has LSU back up to their own, call it the 13-yard line. That's where they spot the ball, and that's where LSU will put it in play. Mickey Gidry getting his second playing experience at quarterback in this game. He played a little bit successfully in the first half. Hudson had trouble. calling on him again as Hudson has continued to struggle all day against this defense. Gidry back to throw on first down. Watkins, the intended receiver, juggled it but got possession before he went out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Richard Fain made the hit. And Richard Fain is down on the sideline. Fain gets to his feet. He's walking off under his own power. Might not be injured as seriously as it first looked. They're going to take another look at him on the sideline. Tony Jones has replaced him at that cornerback spot for the Gators. It's a first down for LSU. 14 minutes to go in the game. They're at their own 25-yard line. Eddie Fuller snowed under by Trace Armstrong and Bill Lang. It was the halfback option pass play, and he was back there looking downfield, and he doesn't have any scrambling ability like those quarterbacks do. And when Trace Armstrong and Lang got to him, that was it. And it's the speed of Trace Armstrong. Look at the speed. The offensive tackle does not cut him off. Trace Armstrong runs a 4'6", 4 4 40, and does he ever jump on the running back's back? Fain being tended to on the sideline. It's second down and 19. Gidry rolling right. The pass is caught by Alvin Lee, but Lee is snowed under as he gets to about the 25-yard line. That was the original line of scrimmage. Tony Jones and Lewis Oliver making the hit for the Gators. Major league hits on that field. Bill Lang, the safety, also out there. A lot of rocking and socking and popping going out there this afternoon. That's one of your uh, classic Southeastern Conference battles, and I'm sure it's exciting for Trace Armstrong who comes to the University of Florida from Arizona State, a member of the Pac-10. Be interesting to see what his comments are about the competition, the level of competition in the Southeastern Conference. It is third down and eight. Gidry back to throw again. Tim Polk was right on him as he got rid of the ball, but it is complete out to the 35-yard line to Alvin Lee. And it should be good for a first down for the Tigers. It is a first down for LSU at their own 35. 12 and a half minutes remaining. 16-6, Gators leading it. Alvin Lee, the favorite receiver, the best wide receiver that the LSU Bengal Tigers had. Gidry 
with an inside handoff to Williams who gets it up to the 46 yard line that's going to be close to another first down Kerry Watkins making the stop for the Gators a little bit of a counter action right there handing the ball off against the flow right there and Kerry Watkins making a, a good tackle in the open field quarterback's going to reverse out underneath handoff and a big trap on Rondy Weston the defensive tackle it is another first down for LSU at their own 46 11 50 the time left in the game Gidry hands the ball off to Williams and he got nowhere Trace Armstrong and Tim Polk the reason why Trace Armstrong watch him explode off the line of scrimmage again the left defensive end right there and Polk Polk and Trace Armstrong just give the runner no opportunity at all Jim Hubis an offensive guard for LSU got up slowly but stays in the game at second and 11 Gidry back to throw the pass caught by Slip Watkins out near midfield. Godfrey Miles and Bill Lang there to cover for the Gators. There's Tommy Hodson on the sideline. And you wonder what they're going to come up with if he comes back into the game. Right now, Mickey Gidry is in at quarterback. Here's a big play. Third down, about seven. Just shy of midfield. Three receivers flanked to the left side. Gidry firing incomplete. Ephesians Bartley back in the coverage. The intended receiver, the tight end, Willie Williams. They tried to slip Willie Williams out and down the sideline, but Ephesians Bartley had the speed to stay with the big tight end. And they were not able to get the ball to him at all. Just great coverage by Ephesians Bartley, the freshman outside linebacker. That is the first incompletion of the day for Mickey Gidry, who's six out of seven. Tony Lomack replacing Stacy Simmons on the punt return side for the Gators. Griffith back to kick. Gets a good high kick away. And this one will take an LSU bounce. So the Gators backed up now. They'll be at about their own six yard line when play resumes. Right now with 10 13 remaining in the ball game. It's a 16 6 Florida lead. We'll be right. And it's first down now in the Gators six yard line. Emmett Smith the lone running back in there now behind Kyle Morris. The give is to Emmett Smith. He gets it out to the 10. He gets it out to the 15. He falls ahead to about the 16 yard line. Clint James making the stop. Emmett Smith not getting up. He appears to be shaken up on that last play. Another injury earlier in the game occurred to Stacy Simmons. And Larry Vitell has an update on that. Larry. Well, we've got an update on Stacy Simmons, but it's not good news. Stacy will not play now in the ball game. They've braced his knee. They could take him in the locker room and see what happens, but he won't be back. Richard Fain, a slight shoulder separation. He's had a great game for the Gators. Don't know if they'll have him for this stretch run. They got ice on the shoulder, and we'll see if he can come back. It appears on Emmett Smith that he got poked, maybe poked in the eye. That's what it looked like from here, Jim. That's what we're hearing from down on the field. They seem to be checking his leg as well. I'm sure he's very tired. I mean, he's made a tremendous effort. I don't. How many times has he carried the ball? Over 20. He's and, 25 uh, carries now for 27 yards. Carries against LSU. You know, you got to be beaten up out there. So he's a very tired young man right now, and uh, he's just taking a pounding. He's just moved up to number eight on the University of Florida career all-time rushing list, going by Lorenzo Hampton. Another notch ahead in that all-time list for Emmett Smith. Who could be passing a lot of people before he's through here. He didn't appear to be that seriously hurt as he walked off the field. And there's Stacy Simmons. That's not a pleasant sight, is it? This is Cedric Smith. And he gets out to about the 
17 or 18 yard line going to be close to a first down. He pulled Eric Hill and Verge Osbury about a yard or two along with him as he tried to pull ahead for an extra yard or two to get that first down. And I think he did it. I think that extra effort made the difference. Not only does he get the first down, but uh, he's going to kill a few more minutes on the clock. The Gator offense is going to stay on the field. Look at the extra effort. He does a full 360, and those legs are so strong he doesn't go down. The clock is down to 924 now. Gator offense with 35 points in the fourth quarter this season. Leading at 16 6. And the Gators continue to attempt to run the ball, use up some time, get those first downs. This is Wayne Williams stopped by Carl Dunbar. Williams in there for Emmett Smith at the moment. As the clock goes down below nine minutes. I don't think you're going to see the offense uh, go in the closet. Uh, they're not going to uh, refuse to throw the ball. I think they will throw the ball selectively, but they would like to pick up first downs, obviously running the football, because that continues to make the clock crank along. They're just posting a notice out on the scoreboard. Emmett Smith needs just two more yards in this game to hit 2,000 career rushing yards in just two years. Williams on the receiving end of the pass. It's a first down out of the 30-yard line. Verge Osbury making the tackle. And that's truly a balanced offense. You see, when you do have the confidence to throw the ball selectively, here in a critical situation late in the fourth quarter, you don't want the opponent to get the football. You don't want to come up with a turnover, but you... You still throw it. You throw a you throw a very safe pa pass route, and Wayne Williams, who has excellent hands, coming out of the backfield, the tailback, he's going to drag along underneath. Now that the linebackers have vacated that area, and Kyle Mars hits him. Gators with their 17th first down of the afternoon. The pitch is to Wayne Williams. Williams got tripped up by Jamie Bice as he got near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10. You know, it really might be to the Gators' advantage to have Wayne Williams in the ball game right now because he's got fresh legs, and these LSU defenders might underrate his ability. And if he gets a, if he gets in the open room, he can fly. He'll be gone. LSU defense very tired right now. You saw a moment ago Emmett Smith getting some ice applied to the back of his leg. Remember, he had a little trouble with that last week, Jim. He did come back and play. Morris delivers the pass complete to Williams again. Penalty markers are down out near the 43-yard line. The hit was made at the 40-yard line. Going to be good for another first down. Jamie Bice making the stop, but we've got a penalty flag down. And we'll see what this is all about. In the secondary, there was a violation. We don't know who it was against. The officials continue to discuss it. Holding. It was against LSU. The Gators will decline, taking the first down and the gain instead at the 40-yard line. Now, that was a second down pass. That's what I mean. Selectively, they continue to pass. They'll pass on first down, second down. They're really keeping that LSU defense off balance. They're not going to simply run the ball on every play. 7.22, the time remaining. Can the Gators hang on or add to the lead? Cedric Smith out across to the 45-yard line before Rudy Harmon brought him down, a gain of about five. And the Gators, Jim, doing exactly what they have to do. You see the ice being applied to the left thigh of Emmett Smith. I don't think this is anything too serious. He had a little trouble with the back of his leg last week, came back in and played. He may not play again today, but. That's, that's what happens when you're a thoroughbred. You know, you get those finely tuned muscles get out of whack. He's already gone over 100 yards for the eighth consecutive game. Second down and five. Wayne Williams looking for running room right side, and he's going to be close to another first down out near midfield. While they unpile, let's go down for a word on Emmett Smith from Larry Vitell. Well, it's been a game of injuries for the Florida Gators, but the last one is no big deal. Emmett Smith is starting to cramp up a little bit, hasn't taken enough fluids in the course of the game. It's not uncommon. They're getting fluids in him. Emmett should be back. However, Richard Fain and Joey Nicoletto, two stalwarts in the Gator pass defense, probably won't be, and that's why the ball's on the ground. That's why the Gators got to keep this clock moving. And it's moving with 6-14 remaining, a 10-point lead. 
They did not have enough for the first down. It's third down and about a foot. But what is so impressive is the movement at the line of scrimmage that out that offensive line is getting. Wayne Williams has the first down across midfield. He got to the 49 yard line. That's all he needed. Verge Osbury making the stop. Another first down and the hand is for Emmett Smith who's coming back into the game. And I, I think also it's a collective cheer for that Gator offense getting another first down. I think what the Gator fans are seeing is a very well balanced offense doing what it has to do in order for this team to win a big conference battle. They've used five minutes and 20 seconds on the clock in this drive. The David clock is moving. Excuse me. The David Williams, John Durden, the big offensive tackles, getting that movement out there, along with uh, Hassam Ishmael, the offensive guard, Brad Hatcher at the other guard. Emmett Smith down to the 46-yard line, and if they give him two full yards here, that should be enough to get him to 2,000 career yards in only the fifth game of his second year. Done it. The only one that got there any quicker, Herschel Walker. And a standing ovation from Florida Field for Emmett Smith. It'll be second down and seven. Handoff is to Emmett again. He goes to work now and getting up to 3,000. <laughs> Picking up about three on that carry. I saw where uh, Tony Dorsett passed uh, Jim Brown's uh, career record. He's number two on all time pro football yardage list over a little over 12,000 yards, I think. Mm. Emmett's at 2,000 here as a young sophomore. A true sophomore. Wasn't red shirt, true sophomore. On the day, 27 carries for 132 yards for Emmett Smith. Third down and four. At the LSU 43, Gators could really use another first down here. They need four yards to get it. 4-14, the time left. Morris back to throw. Wide open and a nice one-handed reception. Oh, what a catch there by Emmett Smith. He can do a few more things than run the ball. Rudy Harmon finally brought him down, but what a catch. Kind of a side saddle grab by Emmett Smith. He's cramping up a little bit again. It's coming off the field, but what a play by Emmett. Another first down for the Gators. Well, the Gator coaching staff uh, recognized the fact that Emmett Smith is a good receiver as well as a good runner. There with a one-handed grab. Big catch continuing this offensive drive for Florida. Third down catch gives the Gators a first down. Emmett's going to come out and take another break. Kyle Morris has now completed 15 out of 28, 147 yards. First down for the Gators, 3.40 the time left. This is Willie McClendon, the freshman who has just checked in for the first time today, and he picked up a couple of yards. McClendon for two to make it second and eight. Well, when we first started talking about this drive, as we look at Emmett Smith getting the ice on his uh, thigh, that Gator huddle was in the end zone, wasn't it, Pete? Yes, it was. Now look where they are. They're inside Started the 30-yard the line. Yard line. Now they're inside the 30 of LSU. You're talking about doing what you have to do. That Gator offense has, has done a fantastic job on this last drive. And they've now used over six minutes on the clock in this drive. Willie McClendon, the ball carrier again. He's got a first down for the Gators inside the 20-yard line. Greg Jackson, Jimmy Young. In on the tackle, Mark Bouti also in on it, along with Rudy Harmon. Uh, we we got a tired defense out there, and not only do we have fresh legs, these are young legs. This is a true freshman, Willie McClendon, looking him dance, shake and bake, a lot of power right there. McClendon coming into this ball game uh, currently had 112 yards to date. This Russian drive has now consumed seven and a half minutes. As the clock continues to run, 2.40 remaining, 16-6 Gators. They have a first down at the LSU 19. Willie McClendon again gets the ball. He'll pick up a yard or two. LSU still has all three of their timeouts left in the second half, but they've got to get the ball back before it's going to do them any good. Clint James making the last tackle. Not only do they have to get the ball back, they have to get it back twice. Once won't do it. Even if they got the ball back once and were able to score, they have to get it back again. Uh, of course, anything can happen, but right now that Gator offense 
is controlling the football and putting this game away. You saw Eric Hill, that fine outside linebacker, being tended to on the LSU sideline. Less than two minutes to play. The pitch again to Willie McClendon. McClendon inside the 15, down to about the 12-yard line. They are on the 12-yard line of LSU. It's a third down and about three. I'm sure they'll try for the first down as well. They've got two opportunities to make two yards. Eric Hill, who you saw being tended to on the sideline of LSU a moment ago, has checked back in. He looked like he was just a little exhausted. Willie McClendon gets the ball again. He was tripped up back near the line of scrimmage, and that's where he'll be brought down. In fact, he'll be dropped for a loss of a couple of yards. But what a drive by the offense. It stopped here. It'll be fourth down. They'll have to call on John David Francis. I believe they'll call on John David well, Francis. But we'll I, see. Maybe not. I don't know that three points would do them any good. If they had 19 to 6 and LSU scored two touchdowns, they'd Very lose true. 20 to 19. So he just might try and uh, run it in there again, uh, perhaps get the first down, ice the ball game. At least if they didn't get it, LSU would be pinned deep in their own territory, needing the ball twice to score. That's the score man making the decision, Galen Hall. And look how long it's been since the Gators have been off to a 5-0 start. And this victory by far, Jim, the one that it's going to really make the, the rest of the country stand up and take notice about this Gator program this year. LSU, a talented ball club coming off a 9-1-1 record last year and a lot of expectations from them this year. This will be a 28-yard attempt by John David Francis. It is good. And the Gators add three more points to their lead. So there you go. Third and final interception. K. Watt. Getting a big one right there. Two for Richard Fain today. And Tommy Hotson, Heisman Trophy candidate, hadn't been sacked, hadn't been intercepted coming in against the Gators. Emmett had a big day, of course, 132 yards. Fun game, and it was fun hanging out with you.